YouTube, it's me again, it's Jelana, and I'm doing my recap chit chat for This Is Us. And this is episode 15. Let me get my notes together, you guys. It is, it's before six o'clock in the morning, and I wanted to get this review done. I watched the, mov the, the movie, I watched the show this morning, and you guys, oh my goodness, what an ending. This <laughs> is just like, ah, I can't take it. I love this show so, so much. Thank you guys for um, commenting down below, for watching, for liking, for subscribing, all that good stuff. Please keep the dialogue going below. Thank you for helping me out when I missed some scenes. I'm doing this like a one take sort of a thing, so I will miss stuff for t from time to time. So thank you guys for cluing me in on the in the um, comment section below. Please continue to do that. I need your help. I need to feel your, your guys' energy, your involvement in the show in the comments, so please do that. I, I'm really digging the dialogue. I had all these assumptions last week about Kate and about Toby and about why she was rejecting Toby and why she was going for Duke. And I was commenting in the comment section below with, um, with Krista and Beth and you guys, I was all wrong. I was all wrong. Um, I don't know if mail, if I shared it with mail, I don't think I did, but anyhow, please, please comment below. I need to hear you from you guys. So, okay, so it's Valentine's Day on the show. This is called Jack Pearson's Son, and we figure out why the episode is called Jack Pearson's Son as the episode evolves. Gosh, I love this show, you guys. Okay, I want, I don't want this to be too long of a video, so I am gonna go scene by scene, but I'm just gonna talk really briefly about those things that stood out to me in the scenes. So it's Valentine's Day. We're flashing back, Jack and Rebecca. She is uh, leaving, she's um, going on her, her tour, she's making a list for Jack. She's telling him, okay, do this, 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 and the other. You know, make sure this happens with Randall. Make sure Kate this and Kevin that. And he's like, hey, honey, I got it. Don't worry, I can handle it. These are my kids, I got you. Let's go to O'Shannon's tonight. Let's have burgers and onion rings. So she's like, okay, we're cool. Next, we go over to Kate. And there's, at the end of last episode, she was headed toward cabin 13, remember? And I was mad. I mean, I was about ready to just jump to the TV and say, look, just grab her up by her collar and say, look, Kate, don't you, you better get it together, girlfriend. But we find out why she's going to cabin 13. And we're like, oh, I was like, okay, Kate's my girl again. She puts Duke in his place and lets him know, uh, you know, just gives him the what for. And Duke says, you know why I'm able to act the way I'm acting? Because my parents own this place. You're going to be out of here. And so then it all makes sense. Because we're all like in the comment section and I'm thinking, and you guys are thinking like, how is he like harassing the people who are part of this um, camp? And he's an employee, so now it all makes sense. So his parents own the place. He's there because basically he's their kid. So we get that now. We're moving forward. Next, we get, we cut to Kevin. Kevin is inter being interviewed by Katie Couric, and I knew immediately that this was a dream. And then he wakes up. Sophie's calling, and she, he says, "Are you going to come to my play tonight?" She's like, "I don't. I can't. I'm working." He's like, "She's like, is this even a good time for me to meet the family again and figure and let them know that we are?" And they say they're cautiously dating. So that's what they're doing right now. He's calmed by talking to Sophie after having this kind of, it was kind of a nightmarish sort of a dream with Katie Kirk where she kind of, she's talking about how he sleeps with every, slept with everybody, then he financed the play. It was just, it was a bad interview. Katie Couric, don't do that to our guy, Kevin. So he's calmed down by his conversation with Sophie. And um, so then we cut over to Randall. Randall's out jogging as usual. And he's flashing through all that's happened recently, all the things that have gone on. His life is, is spinning quickly out of control. You can tell he's getting a little anxious. He pauses. Kevin walks up to him, kind of, you know, says, come on, this, you do this run every day. What are you getting soft on me? And they take off running. They get back to the house and it's just chaos again. It's the breakfast, the kids, somebody lost something. William comes down. Um... Uh, Beth has something to say. Oh, her her mother, I guess, fell and broke her hip, so she's got to leave and go to D.C. I mean, it's just a lot happening, and you can just tell that Randall is spinning. He's stressing out. On top of all, so then we have another flashback. 
Jack is uh, making his Valentine's Day reservations. Miguel walks in. He's like, hey, you know, I really want to hang out with y'all. You know, I want to kick it. You know, I want to get back out there. I'm divorced. Can you help me? Can I be your wingman? He's like, well, you know, um, Rebecca has a show tonight. Come to the show. Hang out with us. It'll be fun. You know, and Miguel's like, all right. So they go. Um, so, but, but, but in that conversation, something critical is shared. Jack feels like one of the guys in the band has a thing for Rebecca, and he shares it with Miguel. And Miguel's like, nah, I don't think so. Oh, you know, you just, you just, you know, don't worry about it. I don't think that that's the case at all. So he kind of puts his friend at ease. You can tell Jack, something's just not sitting right with Jack. We flash over to Kate. She shows up at Toby's room. Basically, she's gotten kicked out of the camp. And Toby's like, yeah, that guy was a jerk and, and all this kinds of stuff. And, and um, Toby uh, was worried. He said, you know, he usually knows the women that he dates. He's usually so confident, so carefree, so well hung. I mean, Toby, every time he gets on camera, he provides me with that comic relief that I need because the rest of the episode, I'm just kind of like so intensely looking at the screen and like, oh, hold my breath. And what's going to happen next? But Toby comes in and every time he comes in, he provides me with that comic relief. And he basically says that, you know, he doesn't really know a whole lot about Kate. And that's why he was a little bit insecure about things. And Kate's like, he's like, you know, we need, basically, we need to have some conversations. We really need to talk before we get married. We flash to Kevin. Kevin's at the dress rehearsal. Uh, he finds out that the New York Times is going to be in the audience reviewing the play. And you can tell he's getting nervous. We do a flashback and the big three are teenagers and Kate, they're coming through the door, you know, after school or something. And Kate blabs that Kevin's having sex with Sophie. They don't know that Rebecca is um, right around the corner and she walks in and is just like, what? You're like, you're having sex. This is hold on a second. Let's let's talk a little bit more about this. And so that scene cuts. Then we go to present day and we're with Kate again. She's out shopping with Toby. Toby picks out this wildly colorful jacket. I absolutely love the way that Toby is always kind of over the top and flashy. I love how confident and bold he is. And uh, they start having a getting to know you conversation. Have you ever had dogs? Did you ever have cats? Da -da 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 -da. So they flash him, you know, talking back and forth, really getting to know each other. And um, Kate asked Toby about his suicide attempt. Now, I guess he mentioned that he wanted to kill, he felt like he wanted to kill himself after he broke up with his, um, his ex-wife. And um, so they start talking about that. We flash over to Randall. He's at the office, the meeting. He finds out the meeting's been moved up to that afternoon. And I'm just kind of like, does this ever really happen in workplaces? Um, meetings don't really get moved up in my office very often where, you know, you're like taken aback. If it's scheduled for tomorrow, it needs to be tomorrow. But I guess they have these, you know, high-powered clients and they can only fit them in at certain times maybe. But gosh, that's a stressful job. No more do he get paid so much money so Kevin, um, so he's at, so the movie's been meet up, may, uh, moved up. So he knows, Randall knows he needs to get cracking on preparing for the meeting. He thought he had a whole nother night to prepare, but then who shows up but Kevin? It's like every time he's getting into, um, his groove, he's like, okay, well, I'll just have to just power really hard. Something happens in the family that just kind of shakes everything up. So he, so Kevin shows up and then he gets a phone call and, and William's hospice nurse is on the phone. Apparently William has locked her out of the house. So then Randall's like, okay, I gotta go. You know, so he leaves Kevin in the office. He rushes home and Kevin kind of basically tells him, um, that he's scared, that he's scared. So, um, I don't know that Randall really says much to him. I don't know if he really even has time to really console Kevin, but um, Kevin is concerned. Um, well, actually, no, it's Randall who says he's scared, and then Kevin's concerned, but there's just so much happening. Things are happening so quickly, and Randall's out of there. Then we flash to Rebecca. Of course, we're going back, um, a flashback again, and Jack and Kevin and Rebecca are all talking about sex. And one of the things I really loved, but this show reminds me a lot of, of parenthood. It just, it feels like real life conversations. They're not, you know, pithy and, and um, politically correct and all of that. And basically the conversation is, 
use condoms and respect the woman. You know, they're just they're just over. They're not gonna try to talk them out of doing it. They're not gonna get into a whole like they're just like respect her and use condoms. And then Randall busts in basically, and he's stressed out about this Hamlet paper that he's writing. He's a teenager, and he's just he's basically imploding about how he's not gonna get everything. How can he say something new and different? And then uh, Rebecca basically says, I don't think I can go on this, you know, on this tour. Then we go to Kate and Kate in t is telling Toby uh, and Toby's telling her about how he planned a suicide, you know, how he planned a suicide. He counted out the pills and all these different things. And then Toby asks her, you know, after he shared something very intimate about himself, he asked her about her dad. Like, tell me, so tell me about Jack dying. And she has a hard time. She basically kind of chokes up. Then we cut to Randall, and Randall uh, lets William know that he needs him to cooperate. He's basically left the office, driven home, and he's told, you know, he's told um, William, look, I got this, 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 and this happening. I need you to cooperate. I need you to listen to your nurse. I need you to be a trooper. And um, William basically breaks down. You know, he he's, he tells him what he's what he's going through. Like I can't get warm. I it's hard. Life is hard. It's just real tough for me right now. Sorry, I'm a little bit uncomfortable in this chair. He's he's really uncomfortable. Ah, he's really uncomfortable. Um about it's supposed to be a chit chat so can i relax a little bit i'm all so, so sitting up um so he basically tells him you know it's hard for me right now and randall feels really really sad about um you know coming down hard on him but he still has to leave and go back to the office so he he's real sad but he he, he go he kind of consoles his dad and then he leaves and then there's a flashback again and we got um miguel and kate um Miguel shows up at Kate's for Valentine's Day and there's some singing and she's singing and Miguel and, and Jack are talking and Miguel sees a girl that he likes and he wants to send her a drink and so he's trying to ask Jack some questions but Jack is like enthralled in Rebecca's performance and so it's kind of like hmm what, what is what's going on what's he thinking and you know we don't really know in essence um, exactly what's going on with him I think um, he feels like something's up. There was a little bit of an exchange, like he felt like she was maybe a little too sexy or something was just not right. He didn't really appreciate her performance in that he kind of, I think he was feeling a little bit jealous. So then we flash to Kevin and Kevin goes to Rebecca and Miguel's house. And this moment really, it, it got me. It got me right here in my heart. It got me in my heart, you guys. He gets to their house and his mom's not there, but Miguel's there. And so he wants to be comforted. He's, you know, he's gone to Randall's office. Randall couldn't, couldn't really communicate with him, didn't have time. And so now he's gone to talk to his mom. His mom isn't there, so he's kind of stuck with Miguel. And Miguel basically tells Kevin, you remind me of your dad. You are Jack's son. You're Jack Pearson's son. And when I look at you, I want to be close to you, but I know you don't like me. But when I'm around you, I feel like I have my friend back. You guys, I was like, oh my gosh, here comes the waterworks. I'm going to start crying. I can't handle it. And I'm feeling for me out because for a while, it's kind of like this little smarmy. I mean, I really, I know I shouldn't not like Miguel, but I was just kind of like, how are you going to hook up with your best friend's wife? But now I'm kind of starting to feel some empathy for Miguel and thinking he loved his friend Jack so much that he wanted to take his on his family when he was gone. I, I don't know. Again, I was wrong about Kate, <laughs> my psychoanalysis of Kate last week. So... I could be wrong about Miguel as well, but I just feel, I feel better about him. And so basically he's telling Kevin, because you don't, you don't, you don't like me, you know, I feel like I, then I don't get to be around you as much, but you have your dad's mannerisms. You, you, you think like, I mean, he just was basically just poured his heart out and just told Kevin how much he reminds him of Jack. And I know Kevin felt that because I started thinking about my dad, who's no longer, who's not living anymore, who died um, gosh, 10, almost 10 years ago, 2000, oh gosh, almost 15 years ago. 
So um, I can understand. And then I, it may, gave me kind of a pep talk. Like whenever you're feeling afraid, you just remember you're Jack Pearson's son. Whenever I get afraid, I'm remember I'm, I'm James Granville's daughter. I mean, I just kind of like, I felt that energy, that strength, like, yeah, you got to remember that. So it's like, you remember you are Jack Pearson's son. And that seemed to just kind of fill Kevin up. And Kevin said, tells me, you know, it's not that I don't like you. And Miguel's like, well, that's enough for now. You know, so we, 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 that's enough for us to build on. I'm hopeful for them. And then we cut to Randall. And I mean, I'm holding my breath the whole time. He's gone back to the office, I guess, between the house and get back to the office. I don't know what happens. Like, he didn't have really any time to prepare. They're stalling. He rushes in with his little tablet. He flips it open. The client is on the monitor and he, you know, kind of simulcast in and he is trying to get his presentation together and he's stumbling. And then Sanjay kind of reaches over, grabs his, um, his um, tablet and then is kind of like, okay, um, and continues the presentation. I'm cringing, you guys. And then I'm thinking, well, can he see? Because remember that time when um, Rebecca said he lost his vision? So I was like, well, can he see? Is he blind or something? So then we have a flashback. Jack, um, Ben, when, when, we're, when we were, Jack has um, a conversation with Ben, who's the band guy. And Ben says something, and then he says, when we were together, referring to Kate. And Jack is kind of like, when you were together, what the? And so Jack, so then um, Ben is, and I guess it kinda, he kind of gives it up that he didn't really know that. And then Ben is all like, well, um, oh, I'm sorry she didn't tell you that. And Jack is kind of like, well, let, let me tell you something. I didn't say what she did. You don't, it's none of your business what she did or did not tell me. And blah, 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 blah. And I mean, Jack, Jack and Rebecca, they know how to put people in their place, like, real quick. And Ben has been put in his place both by Rebecca and Jack. He's inappropriate and I don't appreciate him. Now he's on my, he's kind of on my Duke list, you know. He is kind of like on my, you know, you, 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 you're treading water, dude. You're, you're getting to the place where I'm going to have to put you on the side of Duke because I don't like you. So Jack puts him in his place and then he leaves. Then we're um, out in front of the theater with Kate, Toby, Rebecca, and Miguel. Toby's got that flashy jacket on and he is looking <laughs> good. I am not mad at Toby. You better be flashy. And he uh, tells uh, Kate that he wants to hold off on the marriage until they're able to really talk about everything. She can't share with him about her dad. If she's pulling back on that, then maybe they need to kind of... Um... So he's, then he starts talking about when they do decide to get married, they'll have a water park wedding. And it's funny. And we have a little comic relief. So we're going to have to see what's going to happen with those two. Then we have a flashback, and Jack is kind of laying into Rebecca, like, how come you didn't tell me what was going on with you and uh, Ben that you guys dated? She's like, oh, it was no big deal, and blah, 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 blah. It was only a couple months. We were 19 years old. But regardless, I kind of feel like she should have shared that with, my hair's doing weird stuff. She should have shared that with Jack. I think, I understand her perspective of it, but it was bound to come out, especially men are insecure you know they want to have these little contests sometimes i think she should have told she should have told um jack there shouldn't have been any secrets between them and then he just says like i don't want you going on tour i don't want you going on tour with that guy you know you used to date him i don't i don't like it i don't feel good about it and you hid it from me you basically you lied to me and and she did basically lie and she said she needed something for herself without him getting in the way. And he was just kind of like, I never thought that I was getting in the way. Then we cut to Randall. He's at his desk. He can't see. It's blurry. Things are blurry. His hands are shaking. He calls Kevin and says, Kevin, you know what? I can't make it. Kevin's at the side of the stage with, I can't remember the girl's name, who's the producer or the director or whatever. But he's at the side of the stage with her. And she's like, I'm thinking about everybody in their underwear, so I won't be nervous. And he says, I'm thinking about what would my dad do? The lights go up. She's out on the stage. She's, she turns around to talk to where Kevin would be sitting, and he's not there. I immediately think, oh my gosh, Kevin is scared. He ran off. Um, he couldn't do it. Um, 
and he's then he's running down the street. And we're like, why? I mean, I'm like, are you like, <laughs> why is he running down the street? Then there's a flashback when Kevin and Randall are teenagers and Kevin peeks through Randall's door. I'm assuming he's still working on that Hamlet paper and Kevin and Randall is crying. He's just crying. And then we flash back to present and we see Kevin in Randall's office, you guys, with him. And he, he's, he looks down and, and Randall's on the floor by the wall and he's crying. And Kevin goes down and sits down next to him at the wall and hugs him. You guys, really? 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 So he leaves, basically, essentially he leaves the play he does what Jack Pearson would do. He leaves the play and goes to be with his brother. Then the flashback, and this is our end scene. Jack's at the burger joint. He and Re after he and Rebecca had that argument, he basically says, "I need some space. I need some. I need. I need a, a minute." And he leaves the house. Well, we find out he goes to the burger joint where he and Rebecca were going to have Valentine's Day dinner. He's having a burger and onion rings, and he's drinking whiskey. What you guys think? What are your thoughts on this episode? I thought it was spectacular. Leave your comments below. Sorry about the technical difficulties. I'm going to have to figure out what to do about this um, camera stand and get it to work right. But um, this is early morning. This is, this is us. This is us. You guys, comment below. What did you think? What do you think about Toby and Kate? What do you think about Randall? What's going to happen? What do you think about what Rebecca did? Do you think she was justified in kind of holding off and telling him something about her past? I want to hear it all. Let's dialogue. Until next time, stay tuned, stay positive. Talk to you guys later. Bye.